go straight to Elizabeth because I know she actually um, wrote this this afternoon and I looked and went, ah, oh, really good, because Elizabeth actually messaged me earlier and said, do you know really good MCT oil? <laughs> um, ah. Oh, yeah, I think I saw that question, actually. Yes, you were right, it popped up earlier, didn't it? Um, yes, Elizabeth, it, yes, it's me, she said. Um, hi, Louise. Hi, Nicola. We've got, we've got more people, which is fine. Oh, good. Good. Um, so Elizabeth wrote, could you explain the difference between coconut oil and MCT oil? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's always a good start. <laughs> yeah. So fats come as triglycerides. So you have three fatty acids and you have a glycerol back. And those uh, fatty acids are made up of carbon atoms and the chains between them depict what kind of fatty acid they are. So a long chain fatty acid would have more than 12 carbon atoms. Now, a uh, medium chain triglyceride has, I think it's between six and 12. So you're just kind of on the cusp of 12 carbon atoms as being a medium chain triglyceride, but probably doesn't metabolize as quickly as a six chainer. So MCT oil is normally derived from coconut oil and it is just pure MCT oil. So medium chain triglycerides come in different forms. And one of the most common is, is lauric acid. And that comes in coconut oil, I think there's only 54% medium chain triglycerides. You've still got loads of saturated fats and other stuff going on in there. Yeah. So it's not a pure source. And lauric acid is 12 carbon atoms. So it's more a long chain, even though it's put as a, as a medium. Okay. Yeah. Actually, and that's where this whole dispute around you know, how effective is coconut oil with this kind of thing? And I, I like coconut oil, but I think like anything, a little bit a little bit here and there, I don't think it's something that needs to constitute... A huge low. part of the diet. No, definitely not. Yeah. Um, but that's the whole reason around coconut oil. It does contain some MCTs. I think it's capric acid that or caprylic, I think it's caprylic acid, which has got something like six chained, six carbon chain. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably the most effective and normally what is in the MCT oil. So, yeah. So what would you use, what would you use MCT oil for? Uh, MCT oil, well, I mean, probably one of its major uses at the moment. And honestly, this is like a, a, an epidemic of epilepsy. Hmm within dogs um, and cats actually. A lot, a lot of people are using MCT oils. Now we need to be really careful because we're as nutritionists not allowed to really say anything about diabetes and epilepsy or cancer. Yeah. Um, but you know, we can talk about MCT and why someone might use it. I'm not recommending that's what you go and do, but that's yeah. what people are using it for. The reason why MCT is, is really great is, number one, it doesn't have to go through the same digestive process. So it tends to miss out certain lymphatic processes and it goes straight to the liver through the portal blood. Mm. So um, it requires a lot less digestion. Now, the reason why that's good and it's quite often used in ketogenic diets is because the liver will use it as a source of energy or it will turn it into ketones. Yeah. And the reason why ketones are so fantastic when you have something like epilepsy is because it, it tends to do something with the glutamate receptors. Um, it, it, the, you don't want things going down the glutamic pathway because that's exciting. Exciting, yeah. yeah. One of the major pathways for epilepsy. So that's why that's often used. Um, weight loss because it's using it as a source of energy again probably with a keto kind of diet yeah um, you have to be careful though you don't want to use loads of it um you really want to be going to you, you could go to a holistic vet with mct oil you need to be careful the way you approach it for sure yeah. i think, um have 
worked with a lady who had an epileptic dog and we did the diet thing and she decided to do MCT. That worked well for her dog. But what I have used it quite successfully in is um, protein losing enteropathy mm. because you, you inevitably, when it's protein losing, you're going to have fat absorption issues as well. And because it's bypassing that, um, that sort of emulsification process and the carrier process through the lymphatics, it actually helps prevent further protein loss yeah Um, i've used it a few i've used it a few times um i mean in some cases there was one case came to me way too late we unfortunately lost that doggo um but the two other cases we did we did well and i'm actually working with one lady at the moment incredibly sensitive though so it's so hard to put anything Anything. yeah you gotta. Yeah, awesome. I, I, you almost feel like you're going backwards before you can go forwards. You know, it's literally like one pipette drop of something. You know, when you need yeah. pipettes or something. You know, gosh. Um, but yeah, it it can be fantastic. So I think that's probably why people have been asking quite a lot recently about MCT. About it. Yeah. And I think, as you say, you know, it's talked about so much, but but actually, you know, people don't really know much about it. And as you say, because we've got to be so careful with what we talk about, there isn't always that much information around, is there? No. See, I'm, we could potentially sell MCT oil, but then I, I, how do you then market that, you know, and you've got yeah. to be incredibly careful and you want to know that somebody's dosing correctly which then means you're getting into the dosage side of things which then makes it medicinal so it's difficult isn't it really difficult one I always say with epilepsy look you know these are things that you can look at um, and I can certainly get a vet to contact you in terms of doses but you have to know that it's a dependent choice an independent choice yeah we we do have some more questions Amazing. Um, if on the the um, the live so donna reed hi oh. donna uh, do you have a document that shows the normal blood values of a raw fed dog particularly for urine analysis like urea and creatine no um I mean, obviously we get those things tested in dogs individually. We'll send them back to the vet if we need to have things checked. Um, Honestly, if your dog hasn't got other issues going on, on, I always know that there's, um, you know, there's this issue sometimes with people thinking that protein might be too high and our value okay. I think it's a case by case anyway. I, I could probably do a whole load of bloods and they would all vary quite significantly, I think. Yeah. Not in, I mean, unless they've got something wrong with them, not in terms of you really patterning. Yeah. Um, I can't, yeah, I can't really help you more with that. Is there something very specific that you're thinking about? Let me know. I've got yeah. one percent on my laptop. <laughs> so disorganized today you're, you're not live on your laptop though are you we're, we're no. not gonna lose you <laughs> no but i'm looking at the questions that were posted let me have a look are there any extras i can add to help my dog's fur grow back after a bad this is karen uh me kim kim I'm sorry if I haven't pronounced your name correctly. Um, after a tree pollen allergy, uh, he's now six, he's raw fed, always has been, no vaccines, chemicals. Um, he's having soil based probiotics and uh, berry. Oh, quercetin. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, so normally you'll find that there's probably going to be potentially a skin mutation there. If there's a bad environmental allergy and he's lost fur, absolutely, or she's lost fur, he, sorry. Um, I would be looking at checking for zinc. I was going to say, what breed is it as well? Because yeah. Yeah, zinc is, is, you know, particularly relevant, isn't it? zinc uh vitamin a uh, rich stuff i tell you what might be quite helpful is alloderm it's got um, you really like alloderm don't you i get some really good results with alloderm as an yeah. adjunct yeah. looking at other stuff yeah. bias is amazing for hair growth yeah um you can go up to like 
2,500 IU in, you know, like a, a 20 kilo dog. Um, again, you know, I, I'd have to leave that dosage up, up to you to have a look, but you know, you can use it quite safely and there are products out there that are specifically for dogs. So you kind yeah. of take it out of it. Yeah. Um, the vitamin A, zinc, uh, folate, folic acid would be a really good one. Um, yeah, zinc and A would be the major ones and biotin for regrowth. Yeah. And with the alloderm, it's got fatty acids and cholesterol in there, but you might just want a really nice omega in there. I was going to say, yeah, if see, you see what levels are, are like in the diet, but there might yeah. be a space for it, mightn't there? Really good omega oil. It's probably the first go-to when looking at zinc. They would be the two major ones, I think. Yeah. Perfect. Um, we've got Georgie Gray over on the video. Hey, everyone. Don't know if you're answering any questions on the comments here. Yes, we are. Um, any food additives or supplements that can help support a middle ear cytomona ear infection? Not heard of that. We're trying to resolve and semi failing at the moment. It's pretty much antibiotic resistant. So we're trying to go holistic before potential ear removal. Crikey. Oh, God. OK. Aww. So yeah, middle ear, middle ear infection. What I would you know? I've not heard of that before. No. Um, Antibiotic resistant. And it's definitely a bacterial infection. They've checked for, I presume they've checked and it's a bacterial infection. Should we see if, is it Georgie? We'll see if Georgie comes back. Georgie, I think there's a few things that you could do, but you probably need to send me. I've consulted with Georgie before. Oh, have you? Um, yeah, for her other dog. Um, yeah, maybe just so I know a little bit more of what's going on because it, there might be a slightly different approach. Uh, when something is antibiotic resistant, I'd probably go um, a natural antibiotic, like I'd be looking at colloidal um, garlic, potentially. I'd be looking at those kind of things. I'd need, I'd need to speak to you, really, or you'd send me some messages, Georgie. Um, the... I mean, this would be aggressive, but as a maintenance, if you can save things, I would maybe be looking at the Lucker probiotic ear spray to try and help keep the ecology of the ear balanced afterwards. And then why that there anyway? Do you, ta I think you take your dog swimming, don't you, Georgie? Could be, it, is, it, is it maybe an infection from the water or something? Um, unless there's allergies or there might be something going on with the gut. There could be a number of reasons. Yeah. Can be quite complex, can't they? Yeah, I'd be a bit nervous about going, yes, do this, this and this without <laughs> more. Yeah. Okay. That's it. q and A's, isn't it? It's like, hmm. Um, uh, it's a really nasty bug that changes sensitivity very easily. It's called Pseudomonas. So P-S-E-U-D-O-M-O-N-A. <laughs> Pseudonomas, yeah. Oh, uh, there we go. Um, uh, yeah, I would be looking at an ionic colloidal, um, a spray that you can put in the ear. I know there's an amazing company that I worked with for a short period of time because I thought about doing some topical stuff as well. Um, and they had this ionic colloidal um, like gel and shampoo. And I had a, uh, a dog come to me that had got um, a pseudonoma infection that kept changing on the skin. And we did loads of different stuff and really worked. Uh, it had high clostridium in the, in the gut. So we worked on that and got rid of that. Wow. Uh, but yeah, the, the infection, because it's a really furry, dog yeah was really difficult and that worked yeah i mean i, I kind of feel feel with something like that it's not going to make it worse and you're not going to lose anything if you've gone the traditional route and you don't know what else to do because you yeah. obviously you know you, you don't want the alternative to happen 
Um, oh. Thanks, Alison. I will do. It's Ren who struggled with reactivity, so really don't want to lose the ear. But as it's middle ear, I can't get stuff into it easily. So thinking maybe if we can get something in her body to support. Yeah. I'd be going. I'd be looking at the at the gut. So we'd be looking at, at really good probiotics, a little bit of liver support, mm. some antibacterial type stuff. Yeah, it's for um, that body system. Ionic colloidal for the ear itself. Um, you need to be careful though, because when if it's bacterial and it keeps forever changing, even though colloidal you know, can have that antibacterial um, effect. You're still then also moistening the ear, so you need to be quite careful how you do it. That's that's the only thing with ear stuff, is that damping. Yeah. And, and depending on the type of ear, as you say, it, it stays warm and, and moist, doesn't it? And, you know, it's perfect breeding ground, isn't it? And as you say, that's why the swimming dogs, they always seem to get infections, don't they? They do. I love kissing the ear. <laughs> the whippet's got very silky ears I, I can't see the things that were previously posted um i know there was a lady who was talking about skin allergies um i presume atopic dermatitis and it, it an 11 11 month old puppy and Aww. a realized diet and she wasn't sure what it was and there were persistent ear infections. I would say to that lady, and I'm so sorry because the name's not um, not come up because I can't see my laptop. Um, I that, can't get it up now. Yeah, if you don't mind. Yeah. I'd be looking at gut health, absolutely. Again, I'd be looking at the Lucker um, probiotic ear spray for a maintenance. Zymox is a really good um, eardrop just to use intermittently. Uh, I wouldn't use it consistently. I think you can use it up to seven days, but it's a really good anti-inflammatory. Um, but the main thing is you've got to imagine the ecology of the ear isn't right. And quite often that can be correlated to the gut microbiome, what's going on there, is there infection, are there, is there leaky gut, so the endotoxins going through into the blood system and affecting the ears. It might not be environmental. Yeah. And now, you said that your vet has said not to feed raw, and I'm not a die-hard raw foodie, although I do, do like a species-appropriate diet. Um, I think, Essentially, if you wanted to do like incremental steps and a stepping stone, I'd maybe look at some lean um, novel proteins. Happy Dog do some, um, like kangaroo and goat. Yeah. Kangaroo might, might be a decent one. You only need to get a tin or two and just try a little bit on top of the current food that you're feeding just to see more reactivity it's a lady called sonia and he's currently on hills prescription diet tins and dry food as recommended by the vet um, yeah. gives him a tin of sardines or mackerel a day which he loves most of his puppy food contained grains and chicken so i'm avoiding those two at the moment yeah i mean that that food I always say like uh, absolutely everything, everything has its place and I, I'm not going to start slamming prescription diets because sometimes they can be, on the rare occasion, a helpful stepping stone and I say stepping stone in inverted commas, that's the most important bit. Mm. Be, but you only have to look at those ingredients to know that a lot of those ingredients genuinely have no business being in a dog food. Yeah. Um, so. I would maybe be looking at trying a single source protein like happy dog kangaroo or, or something, just as a little trial, just to see. But I would be looking at, um, I'd be looking at gut health majorly and a natural product to try and, and sort of keep the ecology of the ear sort of he, as good. Um... He's just finished a course of, of steroids. So do you have sort of a go-to plan after a course of steroids to sort of support that that sort of process or? Yeah, the only thing is something like that really requires a consultation because dependent on how they responded to steroids. So you can go, you can sort of 
do different things dependent on response. Um, if dogs were thirsty and didn't cope that well on steroids, I'd take a slightly different approach to if they were okay on steroids. If they weren't that hungry, I'd take a slightly different approach. So I'd want to try and help regulate that immune response a little bit and look at the gut. That'd be the first thing that I'd do. Yeah. Um, He's got a lot going on, hasn't he, at 11 months, bless him. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and also really simple things like, and not not trying to be controversial, but do you vaccinate? Are you flea and um, worm treating? You know, the flea and worm treatments are quite damaging to the gut microbiome. It also raises um, what's called a TH2 response. So um, it can cause a huge amount of inflammation in the body. Um, and cause some real issues around digestion. And then that indirectly correlates to pretty much everything in the body. That's certainly where you start. And, and um, that's, you know, for, for the puppy, that's like part of, of, you know, what we really need to address during puppyhood. It needs to balance out, doesn't it? We need to get that TH1. And as you say, if they, they consistently in that TH2, then that's when we do start to see the issues. Yeah, and I often find, and what's really good is we are having, we're seeing a lot of puppies, sadly, with some really bad issues, like, you know, like the itching that's not nice and the ear infections and so on. Um, but some of it's really simple stuff to address. And, you know, that, that microbiome in the gut is so important and that needs to develop um, at a particular rate, particularly between, you know, sort of leaving mother and and up to about one, one and a half, the ecology of that gut is still changing and growing. And that's sort of those real formative, um, I say years, it's probably only a year, but the most important time, the same for us, you know, ours is about to the age of seven, where our our immune system is um, changing and evolving and growing and shaping and that those very very early times even at the very beginning you know were you breastfed were you formula fed were you c-section you know all of that stuff that that also plays a role in this much bigger picture uh, and particularly in allergies yeah Allergies. One thing I will say, glyphosate is not good for allergies. So you want to get a really good water filter. Get there's a um, one called Life Straw. Um, they do this really nice glass pitcher, and it gets rid of pretty much everything. Um, and I suggest that one. I have a Berkey, but I suggest that one. I've got a life straw as well, um, but I suggest a life straw because it's actually quite affordable. It's about 50, 60 pounds in America. You know, it, it is an American product. It's it's about 60, $70. Mm. Um, the filters aren't too expensive either. So I like the, the Fox ones, P-H-O-X. I don't know if you've heard of them. It's a Scottish company. Um, and they're, they're the same, it's a glass jug. Um, but but yeah, the water tastes so different. And it's really weird because I, I struggled with loads of different filters. I get really bad headaches and it's the only water filter that has stopped my headaches. How interesting. Yeah. I wonder what it is. I wonder whether it's, flu does this one get rid of fluoride? Oh, I don't, it, it's, well, the water does taste completely different to every other filter. So I couldn't, to be honest, I can't remember everything that it gets rid of, but it I might gets get one. rid of, it's brilliant. And it's really nice because it's, it's sort of, it's reusable. So, you know, the refill you just pour in. So it just comes in a, a recyclable bag and then, you know, the pitcher's glass. So, so yeah, I just really like what they stand for as well. It's Fox, so P-H-O-X. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. any who's interested in that. And also going back to the glyphosate, which is um, a pesticide, um, that's actually normally comes up quite high in a lot of these prescription diets as well. So yeah, I mean, it's yeah. got to stay on, I have to say, I'm sorry to go against the vet, um, but they, oh. no, it's uh, not. Jo Georgie said that she will contact you. So that's great. Um, oh, Sonia is there, so that's great. She has been listening. Um, Veronica has been looking to buy phytoplankton but can't seem to find any that's sold on our side of the pond. Can you recommend something? Um, 
on So You're Talking UK? Possibly. <laughs> I'm not sure. Are you in America or are you on the UK side of the pond, Veronica? <laughs> I think there's a quite a few doggy phytoplankton products. You don't have to go doggy as long as it's a good source of phytoplankton and you trust the supplement company. Um, I quite often use the, um, if you are from the UK, I'm just rambling. I quite often use um, the Biocare. It's an algal oil and it's the purest form of algal. They, uh, and they sourced it high and low. Um, it's a really nice one, but it comes encapsulated. But they're not too—they're not too big a capsule, and they're not too hard to break either. If you wanted to then put into the food, perfect. Um, so that's if you're UK, Veronica. If you are the other side of the pond, then we'll we'll think. <laughs> The Adore Beast have got a, a, a new one out, which looks really lovely. Um, I can't remember something about the sea. Oh, I can't look <laughs> my laptop's down. Um, yeah, Adore, if you if you look at Adore Beast and actually put in, the last time I looked, they were actually out of stock. Um, but that's what I tend to recommend to my clients who are that way. I really love the um, liver tonic from Adored Beast. Um, and I really like their, their phytoplankton oil. Veronica, Europe. So, yeah. Case, yeah, fab. Service. Perfect. Um, Sonia, definitely only a short term diet, which is great. And um, thank you. We'll book a consultation. And he's, he is fully vaccinated. But you can get some more info with Consul, which would be fab. Georgie, uh, what's your go-to flea and worming instead? I've never felt confident in not using that prescribed worming yet. Ah, uh, um, I like to use a combination. I normally recommend um, amber collars. There's something about amber um, that... Uh, obviously, there's a, a almost like um, a, a, an energetics that's released from amber that parasites don't seem to like. Now, that on its own, I think, would be a bit flimsy. Mm. So I quite like the idea of an amber collar with a spray. Um, yeah, I like repellents. I like the, the Dermadog. Yeah, repellent. I have. I've some clients that use the Dermadog and really like it. I quite often recommend Don't Bug Me, which is Tammy's... Um, she actually oh. greens. Oh, really? Yeah, and she also sells the amber collars. Ah. Uh, and she's just developed, I actually um, had a little hand in it, a flea and worming um, intestinal. Um, so it's got um, some neem, not, not loads, because you don't want it too harsh, but it's got some neem and pumpkin seed extract and um a little bit of ginger but a bit of peppermint it's really nice it's like a little bit hot little bit of cool it's very gentle um and lots of dogs have really been liking it so i'd probably recommend that it sounds like i've got some shares in greens i don't but those are the three that i i would probably yeah i mean use. for you know for me i I just think worm count with worming and then you know you, you know exactly where you're at don't you me too and actually with with the worms and again anybody who wants to use chemicals and I always leave it up to the person you know if it's once in a blue 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 moon and we're protective before during and after using it then then that's fine I'm not against ever using something like that if there's something stubborn or a bad infestation but if you're doing one cat anyway and you're checking every few months every six months the likelihood is there's nothing and if there is it's like the smallest stuff so i tend to use and it's from biocare the biocidin yeah with grape seed extract and that's brilliant that you know you leave it you treat for seven days leave it for three weeks retest and inevitably um it's mm -hmm. it on but that is an individual's choice and again it's one of those things where i go i can't i can't push that and say but i think actually if you're checking anyway and you're doing worm count it's fine yeah um 
well, hang on, something else just loaded and I lost the comments. What was the filter, please? Life, which was the one you reckon? Life straw. Life straw. Yeah, they're ama- They're like, they were a camping company and then they kind of went into this Armageddon kind of stuff where, you know, if you're stuck somewhere and you can't get any water supply and they've got these like, you know, they're almost like little test tubes and then they've got these bottles. Ah, yeah. Oh, and stuff and now they've gone into more kind of homeware kind of you know user yeah. that people just want for their home yeah and pace the difference in water is is phenomenal i think that's the thing until if you know until you actually try it you don't realize the difference do you no yeah. you really don't. you really don't tracy's asked if bottled yeah. water is okay if what bottled water is okay yeah, I just think it ends up being a resource, doesn't it, on um, the planet? Um, and also, if it's plastic, where has mm. that bottle been? Where's it been sitting? Because, you know, plastic sweats and PCBs, a lot of those um, micro microplastics end up going in water. In water. So then you're going, okay, well, I'm going to buy water that comes in a glass bottle. And then that's just, yeah. yeah really yeah. awesome really expensive and really you know, <laughs> we, we do have access to some great filter systems don't we we do i honestly think it's so much easier than having to go to the shop and haul it back and using that those plastics um you know I even go i kind of feel a bit sad about fiji and evian which are probably you know the, the two best waters some of the best waters on the market and i just go but it's in plastic yeah so I, yeah i kind of think that's sad um but yeah i would get, a, get a filter tracy Perfect. um i think and you know on that note we've we've answered all the questions and we've we've just hit past seven o'clock so super uh, yeah. not- on one which um you know sometimes if i'm here on my own i, I tend to monologue <laughs> <laughs> oh yaz is here hi yaz i bought a brita filter for the dogs now i won't drink tap water it's true though isn't it once you've tasted you don't want to taste really tap water here yes although i've got to say out of all of the filters sorry brita but i think Britta's one of the poorer ones sorry to i really feel like i'd just burst the bubble little pee pee on a parade <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd maybe get the fox. It was, was the expensive. No, the jug, I think it was about £30. And then the refills, you, I'm sure it's two months refill for like £14. So it's not even colossally expensive. Um, no. and, and what, I mean, you know, it depends on whether you like technology or not. But the, the way that you keep on top of your filter is you just download the app. You tell the app when you um, replace the filter or just refill it. And then it just tells you when you need to be thinking about refilling again. So, I love, you know, I love you, that stuff. It's such a good little salesy gimmick, really, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, the company is really good and, you know, it's Scottish. So, so yeah, I do, I do quite like them. And, you know, for me, it was the taste it, and my headaches just disappeared. So, and, you know, I tried so many different filters. It's crazy, isn't it? It is. It really is. But, I mean, the Brita definitely is going to filter out some of the stuff. Yeah. It, about things like estradiol because the highest contaminant in our water is the pill which I just think is so lovely I know it's and you know antidepressants and you know all of all of those meds it's all you know, of it. when you look at the testing that comes back it does make you scream a little doesn't it I can't remember something well, there was something that showed up high in somebody's blood and they'd never taken it before. I can't remember. And that was from the water. I, I'll have to find the article. It's last... crazy, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh, Louise, I've just bought a fox. They've given me a 25% discount for friends. There you go. <laughs> oh, yes. Louise. <laughs> um, what? We have zero water. So that's Elizabeth. Yeah, that's a decent one. Um, Yasmin. Oh, my God. Britta. Sorry, Yaz. Just pee peed on your, your oh. parade. Um, yeah. Liz Goodall, what would you recommend? Sorry, missed that make. Oh, it's Fox, P H O X. Um, Lizzie, loads of questions have just come in literally. Oh. Um, can you overdose on probiotics? <laughs> Sorry? 
can you overdose on probiotics? Look, I think there was an awful lot around the safety of probiotics, but what we don't have is really long-term data, not even on the human side, and we're far more advanced on human research than dogs. So my feeling is this, pulsing, having periods where you might come off. I mean, you know, if you're feeding a raw species appropriate diet and it's uh, diverse and you're just adding bits in there and then, then that's fine. Now, Liz, I know obviously you have um, a doggo that has, is, was it Liz, Liz's question? Who's, yes, it was, yeah. Um, I'm sure it was. Mm. Yes. No, sorry, Lizzie Devine. <laughs> Oh, Lizzie, sorry. Yes. Um, yeah, I think, I think I would probably change or leave it for a bit. Um, yeah, we don't know how long-term it shapes. It could change things. So when you look on the human side, one of the things that became really, really popular and actually still is, is these multi-strains. And these companies were just shoving in all these different strains. Now, the reason why, and I obviously, I work with the microbiome team in biocare, so, uh, I, I, you know, I am kind of probably a little bit leaning more towards that. They went with solid research that had been going on for decades. And it was based on four main strains. Um, and it, then there would be interjected the odd strain that might have a specific action for a specific problem. And I really liked that. And I thought that was less complicated rather than shoving a whole load of stuff in. And some of the newer research is saying, actually there are some strains that compete with or can have a negative effect with other certain strains and, and that's what is becoming more and more apparent isn't it you know it is they're identifying certain strains so you do have probiotics for specific things obviously you can't say that it's going to sort that problem but it we know it acts on those areas and then yeah. other strains have actually made situations worse yeah so i'm a big believer a little bit like herbs in pulsing um so you know the body doesn't get too used to something uh maybe you might go back to something after a few months maybe you might leave it longer you might go to a different brand i think the biggest thing for me is i really like soil bacteria spore, spore bacteria um you know, it's where they would be really sort of deriving their bacteria from. It, I find it tends to suit dogs better. Fermented yeah. ways work that well. No, no. And as you say, you know, they, they would have primarily, you know, digging around in the, the dirt, like, you know, the puppy today, he just kind of knows what he needs to do. Yeah. And they do, don't they, if you leave them to it. And I think that's really lovely. And yet, really, we go, oh God, what? we've got to stop him digging up the garden. I mean, not ideally, but <laughs> digging up all your balls. But, you know, if it's frantic and it's really bad, well, then there's yeah. going to be a problem there. But, you know, if it's just here and there and they're having a little munch on soil, and if it's in a particular area that they really like to go to, it's probably what they need. And, yeah. Oh, self Yeah. Self yeah. You know, even the sneezes of soil afterwards because he inhaled it instead of, eat, of eating it. <laughs> Bless him. I know. You just think some of the... I've been... Not photo bombs, but I've had a good fair few little updates of, of Bruce, the little whippet that's joined Lisa's family. Oh, my goodness. He just looks like a little angel and he just slots himself in places. And He honestly, he's just... <laughs> No. It's like he's been here forever and, you know, he's been here four days. Four days. <laughs> Dream dog. Dream. He is. Bless I love him. Uh, I love Lizzie, Lizzie said thank you, we will get body biotics. Yeah. Um, I think, oh, we've got one, if we do one more question. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. So yeah. Jin Val Assen, my Aussie is getting a yeast overload. I've been treating his gut, pro and prebiotics, etc. quercetin. His skin did turn grey black. I use an antifungal shampoo, but it is taking forever to get his skin back right. Is there anything else you can suggest? Um, yeast. Pesky um, yeast. <laughs> on. 
Has the yeast gone? You said it turned black. Is it is the skin thickened or is it like sort of speckles of black? Is it actually like he smells and it's yeasty currently? We will see what comes back. If that's the case, I would be uh, I'd be looking at sort of oregano, uh, thyme, biocidin. Biocidin from Biocare I find really helpful. You might need a little bit of uh, liver support if there's mm. any if there's any um, die off, um, potentially, and you have to be really careful with this. Um, I'm actually speaking to Joe from, I think it's Luca or is it Luca? Um, I never know how to pronounce it. We'll, we'll no, go with. Joe uh, needs to educate us on that. Uh, but I did say I would chat to him actually, because you know we do recommend his products. Um, but yeah, really good to be looking because the skin has its own microbiome. So there's inflammation there, the ecology isn't right. So we want to dampen down that inflammation, work from the inside, be looking at probiotics, probably after or taken away from something like biocidin, um, potentially. It, does, it doesn't smell, he's feeling so much better. Um, okay and he's winning in obedience. <laughs> ah, well then, that's all good. That's all we want. Um, so pro probably probiotic and a probiotic spray for the skin. If it's if it's dry, um, I would probably get colloidal, can be absolutely amazing. That stuff that I used from America was, South America was smashing. I just, you know, we're doing supplements first. <laughs> <laughs> getting there. We are getting there. Um, Karen, why would a dog self-select Calendula? My dog chose it while walking around the garden centre. <laughs> uh -huh. um, calming effect, really good for... Um, it's soothing, Calendula. Um, really good for skin health. Uh, and it's amazing for the lymphatic system, which, you know, a lot of dogs don't always have that much aid. I mean, the, the lymphatic system has its own pumping system. Um, doesn't have its own pumping system like the blood system, you know, it's... Relies on movement. Reliant on movement. And whilst a lot of dogs tend to exercise a lot, he might just want a little extra helping hand. Yeah, I mean, sometimes self-selection can actually tell you something. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to imply like there's something wrong with the lymphatics, but, you know, yeah, keep keep just keep an eye out and see what else is selecting. Calandula is lovely. It is, it is. Um, I think I think we're done. We've answered the questions, which is fab. So thank you. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Yeah. And thank you for the questions. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody. I'm sorry, I think Helen Burnett actually asked about yeast and probiotic, but we actually answered um, with other questions. Yeah. 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 And we've we've got yeah, we've got a blog on yeast. Have you done a live on yeast? I've done I think I've done a live on yeast. Uh, I think I did that with Proflax, didn't I? Did I? Was that Proflax? Maybe maybe we need to get you done, to do I, on, on yeast. <laughs> Let's do yeast. We'll, we'll we... put it in the planner. Yeah, we'll put it in the planner and we'll do that one. We'll do that one together. Okay. Yeah, you're you're quite well written on yeast, Skin. and I'm doing it all day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll we'll plan it in the diary. Um, and yeah, we can put we've well to the blogs. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Perfect. Everybody, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. Yes, please do yeast. Okay, so we've got a few few requests for yeast. And someone else has actually asked a question. Can you put Luca, Luca directly in the ear? My 18-month-old yeasty ear seems wet rather than dry, so I've been spraying it on a cotton pad. Yeah, I'd just do it with the cotton pad. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I'd maybe even call, I would call... Um, Luca and 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 double check because obviously they know how their product pro works. Yeah, yeah. I'm always okay. really, really careful. I mean, even even colloidal, I tend to put on something and put and suggest to put in the ear rather than straight down the ear. Yeah, and it's a bit of a shock as well for the dog, isn't it? A spray in the ear. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, 
Um, okay, we've got quite a lot of requests to do yeast, so we'll put it in the diary. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in, everybody, and um, keep your eyes peeled for our yeast live. And also, we will have another live next week, but I can't remember what it is next week. Am I doing liver shunts? Yes, you are. Yeah, uh, liver shunts, there you go. Yes, yes, it is. That's our topic next week, liver health, isn't it? And then you're doing liver shunts. Fab, fab. Yes. All right. Perfect. Week. Yes. Take care, everybody. We will see you soon. Lots of love. Bye.